Coast Airport Marathon studio. Ian Eckersley, Brett Lana and Steve Monaghetti in the studio with you for what is the business end of the race, gentlemen. We have come through 31, 32 kilometres. We've got a, a field which is split wide apart. We've got Stephen Lemo uh, putting the pedal to the metal. He has taken out a long way from home, Mona. The debate you and I are having is, are we looking at the race winner in green or is the winner further back and will they chase him down? Well, they need to start thinking about it at the moment. That they're, they're letting him go and assuming that the pace is, is pretty quick and that he'll come back. But that, that, there's no signs of that at this point in time, so he's pretty comfortable. He looks, still looks really strong. He, he's sweating up a bit, but he's lost no form. You know, the things we look for, the arms dropping, but most importantly, that his, his quads, that leg, that knee lift is still there. As soon as that knee lift drops then you know he's starting to really show. I mean, he shuffles a little bit anyway. He's very efficient. But once he loses that real knee lift, then he'll be battling. But at the moment, he, he's on top of the ground, bouncing off the ground, no problems at all. In terms of his arm carry, Brett, it looks to me like it's it's pretty near perfect. It's relaxed, it's slow. We see Jeffrey Eggleston has a really high arm action, but that is quite efficient, isn't it? Very efficient, very efficient. Um, if anything, I would say his arms have dropped a little bit from when we saw him uh, make that that break away from the rest of the field. I'm not sure if that's a, a sign of a little bit of laboring, but uh, still very smooth. What's it like front running, uh, Mona? How hard is it to uh, stay focused, to try and ignore what at this mm. point of time would be the little niggles about weakness and chinks in your armour? That's the hard bit, and you haven't got other people around you to distract you. So the distractions are, I've got a sore leg, I'm getting tired, <laughs> wow, gee, that kilometre took a bit longer than the last one. You, 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 you don't want to internalise too much, to be honest, because internalising now is only going to be negative stuff. So you try to, to say, OK, hey, well, gee, how tired am I feeling? But I'm running away from the rest of the group. They're not closing. So you start to use the positive stuff now. Don't be worrying about the niggles now. You know, there's lots of niggles now. We've all got them. So you just block that out. So this is a real, very much a blocking out phase, focusing on the positivity of the, the how you're running and just where you're at, looking forward rather than behind. And Stephen Lima has a lot to look forward to and he must be feeling fantastic, gents. His 30K split... 15 minutes flat. Hmm. He's gone quicker from his splits have gone 15, 14, 15, 15, 12, 7, 5, 15 flat. He's getting quicker. Can you believe it? But that won't continue. <laughs> so, and and it, it won't. So yes. we know we won't continue. But it's how You're much. Prepared to put money on that, Steve? Yeah, I am prepared to put money <laughs> on that one. So he will slow. But it's it's who slows the least that yes. wins. So that's the that's the story here. Is if he if he doesn't slow, obviously he wins, and the others won't improved pace, otherwise they wouldn't have dropped off in the first place. So it's really a matter of how much that Limo slows to give the others incentive. And the really important mark is at that turnaround out at Runaway Bay, when they come back, they look at each other. They look across the road, Ian and Brett, and they, they eye each other off and they know that one will say I'm coming or one will say I'm winning and that will be the difference that you know when they hit that 6k to go 35k drink station that's where the the views and the, and the psychological games begin we'll get some uh, complete uh, 30 kilometer splits uh, coming up soon but Jeffrey Eggleston has dropped off the pace he's obviously hit a bad patch between 25 and 30k 15 23 was his split there that's still so pretty good and I, I think you know as we've seen, and, and Brett mentioned it, he's probably running to 30k, and he's holding together pretty well. That, that's a race of his life, to be honest, yes. at, to that point. He hasn't finished. It's not the race yet because he hasn't finished, but that's a great effort by Jeffrey. That's impressive. So Stephen Kibbywatt is a name who we haven't really mentioned much from Kenya today, but he is right in the hunt, and I suspect he might even be in second once we see the 35-kilometre splits, along with his countryman, Stephen Toom. So once again, it is an African-dominated race this year after... Uh, Japanese domination last year, Brett. Um, we thought maybe the tide was turning, but I don't know. What does it tell you? Well, I wouldn't... Before I answer that, I, I wouldn't uh, completely counter <laughs> In that last shot that we had, um, we had uh, Takada, the J Japanese runner, running uh, even with Cyrus in fifth, sixth place, and a shot of Kaochi, who did seem to be looking pretty strong and, and, uh, and rolling forward. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I think it's a, a little bit faster than uh, some of the Japanese athletes were expecting. I think uh, they were looking kind of towards this being a, a sub, just going for a sub 210 time, mm -hmm. and uh, it's obviously Limo is going a little bit faster than that. Uh, 
what would you say his uh, his finish time is, is working towards? Is yeah, well, still at the moment. It, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I think in the two eight, and allowing for some, but he's definitely he's under two nine at this mm -hmm. point yeah. in time. So, and so I, I think the guys are probably running to their race plan. They think two ten will win this race, yes. yeah. and it may still well still do that. But at the moment, Limo's running faster than that, and and he's, he, that that breaks. It not, it's not looking like they're closing. You're looking at Stephen Limo, or Silo Limo is his birth name. He's having a little bit of a look around. He'll be coming to the turnaround soon. You are looking at the race leader in the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. And at this stage, he is on race record pace. And he could even be on the Australian all-comers record pace of 2.09.18. We which... are seeing that right now. So don't, yes. don't ever, we should appreciate this guy is running, this is the fastest to this point in the history of Australian running. Yes. So we can say that as, as a fact. So whether he holds together or not, it looks like, you know, he's looking, I don't like, that was that was more of a worrying look. You know, <laughs> I, I start looking for those 1% of signs. So he's starting to get tired, but he's still going very, very well. In the women's um, marathon, uh, good news uh, from a Japanese perspective, Brett, that uh, As Asami Kato is leading uh, 144.16. So uh, that's a little bit outside race record pace, but she's going well. Yeah, I believe this is her third marathon. Um, she's run 2.30 debut and then a 2.29 earlier this year, so this is certainly the best race she's run, uh, run to date. And I, and I think at 3.30 pace, I, you know, I'm adding, I know if my maths is not working, but if you get 12K at 3.30s, I'm adding on, um, on about um, uh, 18 minutes, so I think she's going pretty well. So I, I reckon they're quite fast still, the, the, the women. So I think it might be getting, it's warmer out there than I think we're probably appreciating here, so I reckon it might be starting to heat up. As the competition's heating up, I think maybe the, the sun, the direct sunlight, might be just taking its toll a little bit. I'm sensing that, you know, that Lemo's getting a little bit tired. I just reckon, not sure if that left leg is, is running, bouncing along quite as well as, as what it was a couple of K ago. So this is, and it, well, that'll happen. So I'm not, so that's not, not saying he's yep. not going to win. Fatigue is natural at this point in the race. Yeah. You can see yeah. that left arm had the fingers out straight. Some signs there that it, it's really starting to get tough out there. Um, it's hard to tell what his gap is, but it, it looks is daylight good. second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. you'd be happy with that at this you point, would. wouldn't you, Steve? I think we'd take that if we're all jumping into the race at this point in time at about, there's, there's, I'd say it's 35k they've just gone through. You put put us all a minute up at 35k in, in the Gold Coast Airport Marathon and you're running 2.8 and a half, you'd take that with 7k to go. So 146.30 through 35k, that is record pace. Steve, yeah. uh, I'm going to let your brain do the maths ahead yeah. of mine. Well, but seven that is... threes are 21 if you add that on. You've got to add the extra um, 200 metres or 190 metres, so it, it's, it's still, that is 2.8 pace. Yep, Definitely so doing, this yeah. mm -hmm. this could, as Brett, I, I know you were saying, the Japanese mm -hmm. runners were saying, and in your own view, having mm -hmm. run it here last year, sub three hours, mm -hmm. no reason it can't be a 2.8 uh, record here. Certainly, certainly. Uh, the course is, is certainly capable of, uh, of seeing that kind of time. Yeah. What... Um, a lot sorry, sorry, yeah, a, a lot depends on the wind. Uh, that was my experience last year. Um, you know, up to this, this turnaround that uh, Limo is now approaching, it was very comfortable, and then turning that last, uh, that last turnaround, if there's any kind of headwind, feels very much like running into, just straight into a brick wall. Mm -hmm. uh, so We have had word that it's a, a south, well, southwesterly, which actually won't be off the water. So if anything, it might be a slight tail coming back. So when, they, be, when he takes that final that turn, which would yeah, which would be great. So there we go. That's a, yeah, we, we're getting some information through that. I think it's about a minute gap. So, Gee, um, so Jeffrey Eggleston is still in second spot. But it is um, Stephen Limo who is a long way ahead. Um, Stephen Kibbywatt is uh, so he's just dropped off Eggleston uh, a little bit. So we could be seeing uh, uh, Kenya US uh, Kenya um, uh, finish here on current form. Um, Limo, he's not showing any signs of dropping. I, I'd be very interested to check how mm. he's. Um, uh, last split was through yeah. uh, 30 35 and whatever it is it, it doesn't matter because he, it's 30 seconds quicker than anyone else because he was about half a minute ahead and he's now a minute ahead so he's actually running away so whilst I think he is slowing the others are slowing uh, at a greater rate so he's just got to hold together and uh, you know once he turns he, he's starting to at least psychologically know he's heading for home so he, he hammered it between 15 and 30k uh, 15.07, 15.05, 15 minutes, slipped to 15.32 uh, through um, 
uh, 30 to 35k, Brett. So, uh, as we expected, um, he is. It's hard to hold that pace on your own, but um, it's a matter of who who slows least at this point in time. Absolutely. Do you have any idea? Again, Eggleston seems to be the surprise of the, the race to me here. Do you have any idea what the top American place at the Gold Coast Airport Marathon has been? We've never had one. Well, the top American elite. No. He, Jeffrey's the first one. Okay. So, so we had a couple of paces a, a few was, years ago. Um, one of the guys who went on to run Boston, who's uh, Jason Hartman, I think, that's right. yep. was uh, was one of the runners. But he yep. was strictly here as a pacer, um, having done some running with Troopy. So uh, we could see, see a couple of uh, new chapters in Gold Coast Airport Marathon here, Steve, with uh, our elite American. And uh, we are looking at elite American. Jeffrey Eggleston ran eighth at Boston, 2.11. Um, what are you to read into his form? He looks ungainly. You wouldn't sort of pick that form, but he's holding it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's holding a bit. I think he's really gutting this out. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be pretty yeah. tough for him on the way back. He's sweat, a lot of sweat on his shorts. Uh, he's wearing a cap, which is interesting, uh, having a, obviously to you know, keep the sun, direct sunlight off, cap and glasses, but he's... he's He's held together extremely well. I, this is the surprise of the Royal well, Limo's the surprise running so fast, but this is the this is a, an absolute sensational run from yeah. Jeffrey Eggleston. A and Limo is going away from Eggleston, so uh, Eggleston split through uh, from 30 to 35k, 16:03. So um, Limo added 30 seconds on him between those uh, those two markers. And it doesn't look like anyone's coming through, does no. it? So no. it's really a matter of now of. Limo can hold form, and whilst he's slowing, he's slowing at a slower rate than everyone else. And, and you know, he, he's getting in sight of, of, um, of the finish line. He'll know himself, so he's going really well. Have you seen major blow up, Steve? Somebody sort of running 15 and a half pace and then blow up to 17, 18 minutes? It has been known to happen. Yes, yeah, I certainly. I've sort of seen it here, even on a couple of occasions. It's a lot harder on the, the northerly run out here. It's quite open, not a lot of crowds and quite, um, can be quite sunny and, you know, again, as Brett mentioned, we can sometimes have that gustier head wind on the way back that just slows you up, sits you on your bum. So when you run out of glycogen and you start using your, your body fats, it gets very, very difficult to hold pace. So we've seen uh, great athletes, elite athletes, reduced to a walk on the way back from Runaway Bay. So uh, you're looking at Stephen Limo, the wonderful uh, aerial coverage of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. As the clock ticks over past one hour 50, we would have, well look, hopefully we've only got about 18 minutes, less than 18 minutes of running to go. Lee Troop, we've got a split on. Uh, he slowed significantly, Mono, between 30 and, uh, 25 and 30, uh, 20 minutes uh, 30 for a rump. So he's down to running, um, gee, that's not good. Uh, four minute Ks there for Troopy, but he might still be uh, going um, Quick enough there. So 144, 26 through 30k. Yeah, it might be a tough 12k, but he, he you know, he, he, he's obviously he's got a, a point to prove today, and it, he'll be he'll be giving it everything. So whilst he he looks like he's run out of glycogen and starting to get tired, he, he's certainly his determination will get him across the line, and we'll welcome him to the finish. I can tell you that. So Stephen Limo is the leader in the Gold Coast Airport Marathon again. Daylight second, he is not slowing. His, his pace has uh, perhaps slipped a little bit, but he's not coming back to the field. He's slowing a little bit, but he's not coming back to the field. In the uh, women's uh, marathon there, Brett, um, uh, uh, Asami Kato uh, looks pretty good. She's got what probably should be a winning lead, a minute 27 at 30K. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I'm trying to do the split in my, in my mind. I think she's on 226 pace. Uh, if I'm correct on that, which would be a course record pace here. So it's certainly the run of her life so far. It gives you some idea, because that's about what Troopy went through 30K yeah. in. So, yeah, so yes, there yeah, you go. Yeah. That's a, the, she's winning, you know, you know, she's placing in the Australian Marathon Championship. <laughs> yes, so, yes. So although we have got run. a chase pack of three women behind Kato, and they're all running together. Um, uh, Shintaku, uh, Adiana, and um, uh, Malesi. So uh, mm. there's probably something Kato will have to watch out for with three uh, runners chasing together to try and run her down, Brett. That's... Pretty sizable lead, so I, I think they'll be uh, they'll be hard pressed to, uh, to to run her down without her running into trouble herself. So we have two clear leaders in the Gold Coast Airport Marathon, um, uh, Cato in the women's race, and uh, look at this guy go in the men's marathon. He looks fantastic, doesn't he, Mono? Can you uh, see any? chinks in the form, any chinks in the armour? Certainly not, no, and no signs, and that's what I look for, but there's no looking around with with 
um, with concern or arms down, sh often shaking of the arms is often a, a really early sign of fatigue. So, no, he, he and look at that, look at that leg movement still bouncing, almost you can see almost on his toes still. So he's still full of running. So, no signs of uh, fatigue or, or slowing at all in in, uh, in his form at the moment. So Stephen Lemo, he's coming across. So uh, I think this is probably the last bridge crossing. He's probably only about, uh, what are we talking, 4K from home or something, less than 4K from home. So, Steve, the, the, your mindset at this stage, when you know you've, you've got a clear break, uh, it does, you would be feeling confident at this point, wouldn't you? He would. This is where all the training comes into, into play for him. So he, he's obviously feeling well. There's the drink station through 37 and a half. So exactly as you predicted, and he's got um, four and a half k to go. So you know, you start. I start thinking three minutes. You start working it out. It's 15 minutes of running. Well, 15 minutes. You know, morning tea break. So for him, 15 minutes of running is not much. And that's that's what he'll be saying on his mind. You know, 15 minutes quickly becomes 10, which quickly becomes five, and I'm I'm in the finish shoot. So it's now that that positivity of looking forward, saying it's not not much further now. I, I haven't hit the wall yet. It's all looking good. Make sure I get some fluids on board there, which he went back for. So good signs. Stephen Lemo uh, at the 37 kilometre mark, five kilometres to go, had a 500 metre lead. So that's somewhere in the order of a, a, a minute and a half, a minute 45. Um, gee, he looks good, Brett. You'd be uh, you'd be putting your money on him, but he was not someone who, uh, out of our ignorance, uh, featured strongly in the pre-race calculations. So he's come through as a bit of a surprise packet. Certainly, certainly. He might next year. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we've got to remember, you know, there's a it, the two nine eighteen. Whilst we talk about course record two ten oh one. $15,000 first prize, $5,000 purse for the race record. There's a $20,000 bonus for the all-comers record of, of Rob's from 82, Rob DeCostello. So 2918, and you know that might be enough incentive. That's the incentive that you start calling on it. it, it whilst it's money, it's not money. It, it's it's the prestige of running the fastest time, and that's on your CV forever. So uh, 15 minutes of pain for, for a lifetime of memories, and that's what Limo's thinking about now. Just keep an eye on uh, Nicholas Manza. I think uh, Manza looks like he pulled out somewhere around uh, 15 kilometres, uh, somewhere between 15 and 20k for Manza. We didn't get a split on him. So, Steve, you were saying yesterday you thought Manza didn't sound super confident. Uh, that's probably been reflected in uh, <laughs> in his disappointing performance today. Yeah, normally you wouldn't be as, as open about, um, you know, he was smiling, saying, oh, I'm not sure. and. And you know, obviously, leading in a couple of days. If you're saying that publicly, then internally, that's even more of a sign that you're probably a little bit concerned about your form running in. And there's nowhere to hide on on the road on the bitumen at 42k. So whilst you can pretend and say what you like physically, if you're not quite on today, then it, it's going to um, come back to haunt you. So and that's what's happened, Nicola. It, you know. Great, the, he's had a go. He's ran. Uh, he's, he's been great for the race to have the defending champion and the the um, equal course record holder out here. But you sense that there there might be history in the making out on the road now. Brett uh, Yuki Kawuchi just seems to churn out sub 210 uh, runs at will. Um, He's in trouble today. 16:26 was his split. He really is slipping backwards. Yeah, uh, is this going to open up some criticism about uh, the, the Yuki punishing schedule in uh, Japanese media? I don't think so. I don't think so. He has had bad races in the past. Um, when you're when you're hitting it that many times, I guess you can't hit a, a home run every time, as it were. So yeah, I I, I don't think there'll be a, that a, a underperformance here would result in, in too serious criticism. But Yuki Kawachi is somebody who likes to do things differently, and you were telling me uh, yesterday that uh, he had uh, Olympic marathon selection for London sewn up when he'd run a qualifying time. He didn't have to run another race. That's right. He performed poorly and missed out. That's right, that's right. Um, the Japanese Olympic selection procedure involves three races, and if you're the top Japanese finisher under a time standard in any of those three races, you earn a place on the Olympic team. And he was the top Japanese man, sub-210, at the Fukuoka International Marathon in 2011, which gave him a solid chance for the Olympic team. And he said, this was not a serious race effort. I'm going to run the Tokyo Marathon, the next selection race, and that's my serious effort. So please don't choose me based on this. And the Federation was just saying, what do you mean? This, this, that's not how the system works. And, no. and he said, well, that's the way I want to do it. And he ran the Tokyo Marathon and underperformed there and was not selected for the team. So that's the way he does things. So Yuki Kawichi, uh, defending champion, equal record holder. He is out of the picture. Nicholas Manza, equal record holder, 2011 winner. He is out of the picture. The man in your picture is a new name in marathon running on the Australian scene. 
Stephen Limo from Kenya. He is going fantastically. He is on race record pace. The question in our minds is, is he on the Australian all-comers pace? Are we seeing the fastest ever marathon on Australian soil here? His form still looks good. He'll be two and a half K from home. He's probably got something like we hope. Uh, eight to nine minutes of running left, Stephen Limo. Uh, Monas, yeah, I think he's looking good. He is looking great, and we'll get that 40k split because from there you've got, you know, once you, and he, I reckon he's probably in the two hours now. How good is that when you see the two hour time come up on the lead clock and you, you know, you're a minute, a minute and a half ahead? You, you're very confident, so that time will be the significant thing for him now. So uh, we'll see that 40k split. You're probably looking, if you're working on three minute k's, you know, you got six plus the 200 metres, so you've probably got six and a half, you know, six minutes 40. So we'll get a really good indication through 40k if that uh, all comers record is in serious doubt. So the picture's breaking up a little bit, but uh, you're looking at Stephen Limo uh, making one of the, the last turns uh, here on a course which is very flat very fast and maybe today we will see that uh, the Gold Coast Marathon has proved that we've been saying for many years that it is flat and fast. Um, uh, Brett Lana, this, this could take the Gold Coast Marathon to a whole new level if we get certainly sub 210 and sub 29. Certainly, certainly the, the IAF Gold label this year uh, certainly raises the race to, to a new level of prestige and getting that kind of time and that kind of course record, the, the all-comers record here could certainly only continue with that uh, yeah, that it reinforces status. that label, yeah, doesn't it? Absolutely. I reckon. You know, I think that's the important thing. And whilst you can have runners on paper who are running two six two seven, if the winning time is now, you know, in the in the two eights, then that will certainly um, enhance that gold label status and attract runners from um, international runners to come out here to run at a series marathon. Definitely reinforces the reputation as a as a world class event. Yes. Yeah. So, I hope uh, he doesn't run too fast, though, because then you know, we can't talk about course <laughs> records and, and stuff. So we want him to just sneak under, don't we? Well, you know what, Steve? I'd be happy if, if I we don't have would, this I'm broken sure. record yeah. Um, yeah. script every year of uh, is this going to be the year that uh, the Gold Coast Airport Marathon record goes. So, uh, But we could well be looking at history here. So Stephen Limo, also going by his birth name of Sila Limo, is going fantastically. Uh, he has a clear lead. I don't think there's any sign of him coming back to the field. He took a very brave move and punted uh, on backing himself, going from about, uh, uh, it was just after the halfway mark, wasn't it? Just it up was, to 25 yeah. kilometres. It's very early. I, I'm sensing some signs he's slowing um, quite significantly, but so I don't know. I reckon, it, mm, yeah, I think that all comers record, that's going to be tough for him. I think the course record, it, it looks like he, he, he might run under 210. I, you know, I think he needs to keep focused here. He needs to really give it everything. This is the, you know, a really big run for him, and, and he will, he will realise that. He's out in front. It's really just a matter of how fast he can run now. So I'm hoping he just keeps, um, keeps pushing right through to the finish. I think once, once you get, there's a finishing straight here, and once you kind of get out of this waterfront area, you start sensing you're near home. You still feel like you're a long way away here. So I think he's, he's probably mentally still far enough away to be just struggling a bit. So once he turns, he gets into a little bit of shade, and you turn, go over one little, um, over, uh, little bridge over a little um, inlet, and then he basically is in the stretch for home. So he goes 40k there? Yeah, so we should get those splits. So 20209, so okay, seven yeah. minutes. Ooh, Ooh, it's going to be touch and yeah, go for Deke's record, isn't it? It's going to be really tight. Jeez. He really will be tired. He'll be down, struggling. Look, can you get that 5K for us? We need that last <laughs> 5K because I reckon you'd almost, you'd say, you probably halve that, and that's what he's going to run for the last 2.2. So he is really close now. To, he's, he's out running. He's gone from 2.8 to, to probably right on 2. 0900 now, yes. so it's tight. But he's yeah, he'll kick, he'll lift a bit, obviously, in the last K or so. So it's this next K now that's really significant. So in his mind, he must be thinking he's got the race sewn up. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen him looking behind uh, lately, Steve. Great so time. he must be feeling confident. Yep. Does that? If he's got someone on his shoulder, that's going to push him on. But uh, for him, I guess he's be thinking the race is uh, in the bag. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd be running out on the course now and telling him you, you're winning, you're breaking the course record, but do you also know that you know, you're really close to breaking the all-comers record and you know, that's a significant result. So I reckon someone needs to get out there and be telling him right now that it's, you know, it's, it's touch and go on that. And whilst he's slow, he'll know that, but 
psychologically, if he feels like he's got something to chase, I reckon that will keep him going. He can run under the all-comers record, but at this point in time, he's slowing quickly, and I sense he's going to be in between course record and that all-comers time. Yeah, so still, he's still good. We're not downplaying. He's going to run under 210. But, uh, that's extraordinary. Um, he's split uh, from 35 to 40k. Uh, he slipped a little bit, 1547, after running around uh, 1535 for his previous 5k split. Yeah, we normally say, and history would show, if you run, if you get running on, you normally run just under seven minutes for that last 2.2k. So. It's going to be tight. He is basically right on Deke's all-comers record, but he has to lift. I think it's now whether he lifts or whether he he, he slow, you know, keeps continues to slow, slow at a slow rate. But that's the important thing now. So Stephen Lima, he's run uh, sort of 63, sub 63 for a half marathon. So certainly had some pedigree. Um, his marathon times probably didn't um, have him in the uh, upper echelon of the elite class here, uh, Brett, but. There's no doubt we're looking at the, uh, the the leader and probably the winner of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. Certainly, certainly. And uh, just as, as Steve was saying, I think if, if he's he's very close to getting that all-comers record, if he just really pushes this last uh, this last section, we're he's seeing very a, close. A, very a close. gap in the crowd, but very soon the the depth of the crowd, the noise from the crowd, this is, is the going big, to build. Yeah, and this yeah. is where he goes over one final bridge here. And he's basically got a straight section now, and then he turns and he, he's in that little um, chicane to the finish line. So this is you're starting to feel the crowds will he will <laughs> yes. see the crowds now. So he, there'd be people out on the course now yelling and giving him support. So he's starting to grimace a bit. It's obviously tough, and he's working hard. So I just I'm really I'm wanting to send vibes out there that keep pushing because this is, is this is the fastest time we're ever seeing on Australian soil. But it's it's. Those seconds are creeping by quickly. Yeah, so it's got about 1.2. He's just come through 41k, 1.2k to run. That's maybe about, you know, four minutes and a bit to run. So we think he's on sub 210 pace. We might finally crack that barrier and a new race record. But uh, Deke may have to keep uh, willing everybody else on for his all-comers record yeah. for another year. Well, we get him out there to encourage <laughs> Lemo or not. What's he doing? Is he? I'm sure he's encouraging it. And we know Deke wants to see that record broken. So he'd be certainly supporting it. Just looking at those times there. Brett, you got a bit of a surprise in our fourth place runner there. Well, yes and no. Um, as I said before, <laughs> yeah, Kalachi does has had uh, in the past a history of falling off around 25 and then really falling his way back after 35. And he seems to be doing that. Uh, what do you so think, third place possible? He's in fourth I think right second now. place possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, Jeffrey Eggleston is uh, a, a minute 20 behind uh, Stephen Limo. Um, he's got a good gap of, uh, he's doubled that gap, a minute 20 uh, then, or a minute 10, ahead of uh, Stephen Tum and Yuki Kawuchi. So uh, Yuki could still write another chapter with a, a podium finish here at Gold Coast. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. But, but Stephen Lemo... You've got, got a bit of a spring in your voice now, Brett. That's yeah, what you're yeah. you get, that's tough because it's not easy turning it around when, you, when you're when you having a day where you feel like you're going backwards. That is mentally strong. It, that's a great result for, for you. So we should be really happy the way he's running on. He'll be looking to... Obviously, he's got second, uh, third place in sight, so he'll want that day as uh, finished for sure. Yeah, he did say in uh, in his previous comments that, uh, you know, based on last year, the experience with uh, one of the Africans taking off on the hill at 31 kilometers yeah. and then... Him having to kind of work his way back into contact, and said he kind of expected the same sort of race to, right, tonight, to happen this go. time. So he predicted it that yeah. way. Yeah. But uh, the Africans have not come back, and Stephen Limo is not coming back as he runs down the 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 final straight run, going past all the tents that are set up by running clubs, uh, by uh, running organisations. The crowd will be lifting him through the final 600 metres, 800 metres. We will be watching ever so closely on the clock. And he has Stephen Limo. Again. Yep, no doubt about his form. He's really, he's, he's actually got back into his running rhythm again. So these seconds are really important. He's probably 500 metres from home or something like that. He will turn into the uh, the final turn, which is probably about 400 metres from there. So Stephen Limo of Kenya. He is running in fantastic shape. There's He's the endured code. the heat. There's the turn. Yep. There's the turn. The crowd will lift him even further. 
This is what it's all about. This is what he has worked for. And in one sense, this is what Gold Coast Airport Marathon has worked for. 250 to go, two hours, 8.30. It's We're not going to see Nicholas Manza and uh, waving tight. and high-fiving yeah. down the finish, surely. Oh, my God, this is going to be right on that record. Pushing for home, Stephen Lima. He's looking at his watch. Is that a good or a bad thing? <laughs> I hope he's yeah. conscious of the 2.918. Go for it. Stephen Lemo now in the finishing shoot, 100 metres from home. I think he's got it. Oh. Yep. Stephen Lemo is the 20 seconds. clear leader. He will be our winner of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. It will be touch and go for the deep record, but he will definitely cross. He's got it. With a new race record. 209.14 cross, he might round up to 209.15. 15. 15. That's it. He's done it. A new Gold Coast Airport Marathon record, the first time under 210, and a new record, the Australian All Comers record by Rob De Costello. We didn't think he was going to. You're confident he's there, Steve? Couple I'm of confident. Seconds. I'm confident that clock says that he's under, that is the fastest marathon run on Australian soil ever. History in the making. Sila Kipkemboy Limo of Kenya, and here comes. Jeffrey Eggleston of the US, the first ever elite podium finish at Gold Coast Airport Marathon. This is a very gutsy run, Brett, by Eggleston to hang on. He had a bit of competition through 30 to 35k, but he's had to run this last 7k on his own. Absolutely, it's a, it's a very, very strong performance, and we should also stress it's going to be a big PB for him. As well. I think his PB is only 211.57 from Boston this year, this so year, he's certainly right. on track to, uh, to smash that here. So Jeffrey Eggleston, the arms are flapping. He is very, very tired, but he will be lifted home by the crowd, by the cheers, by the clock, and the sight of the finish line, which is literally 100 metres from him, and potentially a PB. We're going to watch that clock very, very carefully. Jeffrey Eggleston. Just going to sneak under 211. Yeah, that's a great run. A minute PB, that would be delighted. Jeffrey oh, Eggleston blesses up. himself, pumps that's his famous. fist, and crosses the finish line in a new personal best. But Jeffrey don't lose Eggleston. It. Ian, there's Yuki. Never count Yuki out, Brett. Never count him out. Never count you call out. him home. He's, uh, you can expect to see probably the, the, uh, the, the fastest final kick in the field with Yuki. That's uh, his style, always strong at the end, no matter how much trouble he gets into. Yuki Kawauchi, he is a race favourite here on the Gold Coast. He's an absolute favourite and a legend in Japan. He's finishing third, but courageous, gutsy, 100%, nothing in the tank as ever. That is pride, isn't right. it? Pride right. and courage personified. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, how many uh, how many elite marathoners do you know who run into trouble early on are able to you know, not keep pushing it on and then once come back. that leash yeah. is broken, yeah. Brett, it's really difficult to turn it around. That is a terrific. The way he's come home today shows that how tough he is. And that's still a class time by Kawuchi, two eleven twenty seven. He would take that most days of the week because of the volume of marathons that he runs. He'd be disappointed, Brett, I'm sure, but uh, we can tell what a what a proud and gutsy runner he is, um, coming home strongly like that. Yeah, I would certainly expect uh, a fair amount of self-criticism from him uh, based on, on a 2.11 third place uh, finish. You know, he was expecting to do a bit better, but for anybody else, I think that would be a, a very quality very yeah. quality performance. Oh, I think, yeah, I, I think in the light of day, he'll be happy with the way he really ran the, the, the last section of the race coming home so strong. It's always great yeah. psychologically yeah. to finish so strongly. So we're seeing Sammy from Ethiopia. Yep. He is coming down, rounding the last bend for the close of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. It's a great run by Samuel. He'd be delighted with that. He has a PB of 2.8, but from a few years ago. Won the Canberra Marathon earlier this year and came out here for Sydney Marathon. He's, um, he's uh, stayed out. He's an asylum seeker, so he's doing pretty mm. tough, and that's a, that's a terrific run So it's by Samuel. Great run. Fantastic to see here. Guys, two guys under 211, that's, uh, I don't think that's ever happened at Gold Coast before. Sub 210, sub 211 for a second. History in the making and 213.09 for Sammy from Ethiopia. Terrific, terrific run. You're looking at the winner there.
Uh, fantastic to see, isn't it, gents? What a what an historic day here. I'm glad we've we've seen it. It's happened. We've had the fastest run ever on Australian soil by uh, Silo Limo. What a what a terrific day for Australian marathon running, but certainly for the Gold Coast Airport Marathon to have such a significant time. Silo Limo, he is all praise. He is all joy. We're speaking to him at the end. We'll see if we can get sand on this interview. You. Uh, Went on your own, and uh, for that last 10 or so kilometres and ran the whole distance yourself, uh, did you ever expect to run sub 210 on your own like that today? I did not expect I was in uh, 212 or 210, and I, I tried to do my best time. I tell you what, you had us all on edge. We've been, uh, us commentators have been waiting a lot of years for this to happen, you know that. To someone to come here and do 209 is absolutely awesome. I'm not sure whether you got under, under Deke's time, but it was absolutely awesome. Kilometers, it was me on alone. It was, I was expecting to, to run to seven, but but uh, 25 kilometers, I was alone. I pushed it until the, the end of the marathon. Well, I'm going to let you go and get to the press. I know that everybody wants to talk to you. Thank You're you a great champion, and we wish you all the best. And thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Sila, absolutely awesome to see you. Magnificent race today. There he is. Busted. Benita, welcome back to the commentary uh, studio here and yeah. we've done it we've seen a new race record yeah it's been fantastic to watch it on the screens and to be out there and just see the reaction to to something that's been just stood for so many years and uh just to see that get, getting broken i mean seeing jeffrey edwardson as well just speaking to him yesterday he he ran a pb in boston and come, to come again to run another pb here it's fantastic and it's it's great for someone coming from a long way away uh, you know, Kenya, then USA, first, second, it's fantastic, mm. yeah. We yeah. thought that tyranny of distance would serve the Japanese run as well. Of course, we said, saw Kaouchi um, yeah. uh, coming home for a very gutsy third. That was an impressive finish by him. He obviously struggled through the race. Don't we love that international flavour again, yeah. though? We've yeah. got Kenya, America, US, which will be great for yeah. attracting yeah. other US athletes out here. That'll be mm. a really good story back in the States. So, mm. so we've got Kenya, the US second, and, and then uh, Japan third. So truly international flavour in the men's yeah. uh, day as finishes today. Benita, yeah. you're at the finish line. Was there yeah. a lot of hype? Were the crowd really cheering him home? Oh, yeah. And, and I mean, to see these guys just, just, I mean, you're just struggling in the last bit. And, and to see them finish so strongly and they just know that they've got these times in their heads that they want to do, it's just fantastic, you know. And the crowds were really, really yelling. It was great, yeah. yeah. You yeah. didn't know that he was going to get there? No, it was close. I mean, it was close. And yeah. he did look at his watch. Um, and, and I saw that on the TV screens. And we're like, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah. Well, I reckon that showed. He was yeah. conscious of that 2 yeah. 9 yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I yeah. was happy he did yeah. that. Normally, I wouldn't say that's a good thing. But I think he, it made him more conscious yeah. of it. Yeah. But he looked to be running strong and positive. We, we uh, saw a couple of looks behind early on. But not after he made that final no. turn for home. He wasn't looking at his watch. So, Benita, he was running how he mm. felt. And yeah. still was hanging on and, and, and felt pretty good through the end. Yeah, I mean, he looked strong, you know, and he looked like he knew he was going to do it. Mm. And that's what you like to see at the finish. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah it, you know, everything's hurting at the finish. So <laughs> you just got to hold it together as best you can. And I'm really yeah. surprised because he was he was continuing to increase those 5Ks, but mm. he was getting faster through sort of 15K to 30. Normally, when you're doing that and then you start mm. dropping back, you drop back more significantly than mm. he did. So he controlled the race. He ran well. He, that was a, an outstanding result. And, you know, with, I'm saying, you know, a couple of minutes probably uh, slower on this course. So he's probably a 2.7 marathon runner today who's who's smashed the, the uh, course record that stood. You know, he's a minute, almost mm. a minute under that and broken Deeks record. So it certainly was one hell of a... And he's won mm. by such a significant amount. Yeah. I think, you know, we yeah. said we had 12 or 13 guys that were sub 2.10 in this yeah. race and mm. he's absolutely blown them away. He's the only one that's ran under that 2.10. Yes. You know, he's mm. won by almost two minutes. So that is such a significant win. Uh, fast time, smashed the opposition, mm. went so early. Uh, and you know it's just overall a, a terrific result and looking at those splits as we saw it was that uh, middle section of the race where it was no guts no glory 1505 for a 5k split followed by 15 minutes that really busted it open didn't it Benita what, how are you feeling watching him it was a courageous move yeah yeah and I mean very few people do that very few people and I think it takes a lot of guts but also you know that that's going to make you hurt a lot at the end and you've got to finish and and that, that's just something that uh, very few people can do. You know, once some, some people start going backwards in a marathon, they just keep going backwards, backwards, backwards. Yes. But even with Yuki, I mean, he, he battled through a lot, you know, comes through for third, that's fantastic as well. So, yeah.
It'll be it was interesting because those three yeah. runners actually all look to be struggling through yeah. halfway, yes. and and yet yeah. no one's run over top of them. And normally, you would see if they're running and struggling at that early stage, people would run over top of them. Whilst yeah. they were fight, they've actually hung on extremely well. And yes. Yuki's mm -hmm. come home really well. So you know, personal best for. Um, for um, Jeffrey Eggleston, which is terrific, and, and whilst he was struggling, you can't mm. can't ask for more than that. He's run a PB by over a minute. So yeah. struggling and yet holding together is a really good sign for the future of this race. We will attract runners who know mm. you can go fast and hold uh, and run fast times here. So Lee Troop's got about seven k to go, uh, two oh two at thirty five k. So that's. Uh yeah, that's going to put him outside 220, isn't it? 230. Uh, he'll probably run. He'll be he'll be just around 230. So you know, whilst that's not what he wanted, that's that's still pretty good. I I, I think mm. in in the in the cold light of day, he'll be quite happy with that his body's holding together and that he's got there in his last race on Australian last marathon on Australian soil. The other Japanese that we had a very close eye on, uh, Arata Fujiwara, he's uh, he's really fallen apart. Um, uh, he's still out on the course. We haven't seen him finish yet, but he mm. was uh, looking direct. Well, he's 217 through 40k, so yep. probably 226 or 225 or something like that. That's uh, that's not a good day at the office for him, Benita. Um, no. uh, but that happens. The marathon will test you out mm. like pretty much no other it, event. Well, no, it's brutal. And my last marathon, you know, I wasn't quite right. And, and you, you, you know, you can see yourself going backwards, but it's nothing you can do. You just want to finish as well as you can. Mm. Um, and, and people often blo are blowing up um, in the second half, even if they're finishing, you know, even if they're at their best shape. Mm. Uh, so, and yeah, I've got a guy that I'm coaching that's coming in the top three at the moment in the Australian Championships from Queensland. And That's Alistair Stevenson. Steve-O, yeah. Yep, yep. So he's, got a close um, eye on him. He's battling on though, you know, he's very, yeah, the, before I came in here, they're very close to finishing, but uh, I just get nervous watching people we I coach race. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> well, welcome to the world yeah. of uh, elite coaching That's as a your runner. That's future. That's it. Yeah, you I control really, it as a yeah. coach. You've got yeah. no yeah. control. Yeah, you feel really jittery. And when I'm watching the screens over there, I'm just watching updates of the other guys that are not on it. So I keep standing up, walking around and going back. <laughs> and it's because you know the work they've yeah. done. It's not because yeah. we, we, we have any worry about what's going to happen. Mm. We just understand the work that they've put in, that everyone yeah. puts in. And you deserve yeah. to run well or you wouldn't be on the start line. So it's a bit unforgiving when yeah. you know the pain and anguish they're going through and all of those, they'd be mm. those negative thoughts they're having. And we feel a bit responsible for that. So, you, you know, you feel mm. their pain and you carry them to the finish line and, and hope they get there in as best shape yeah. as they can. Yeah, and there's only so much you can say to them before the race and, and you yes. just got to let it unfold. They're just going to do the rest. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, everything was set up for some really fast times today and, and the guys are just, yeah, they just got to finish as best they can. And I mean, I, 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 yeah, I love Troopy and I've been in so many teams with him and it's just... It's a real thrill for me to see him do his last marathon here in Australia as well. We mm. think thrill. Troopy is uh, is on track uh, mm. to uh, win the Australian Marathon Championships. We're uh, just looking for not, some... Not, not, no, not there won't be. So there's no. Rowan Walker. Yeah, so. Rowan. Ah, so Rowan, all right. No. Okay. So Alistair Stevenson is... Um, uh, Third, so, yeah. 2.15.58. So Rowan might do it again. The quiet achiever, yeah. Rowan, yeah. he's finished in the top um, six or top seven the last six or seven times. He is very mm. consistent. And again, he's produced it today. Yeah, I think Rowan had a, about a 30-second gap on Al um, at about 35K. Right. So he looked to be going a bit stronger. Um, I know Al's got my PB in, um, in, in target, 222.36. Well, there's um, so <laughs> Rowan's just crossed the line so, in just under 2.22. So okay, I think yeah. that's the Australian marathon title to yeah. Rowan. Who's, who's, Rowan's yep. 44 years of yeah, age. Yeah, 44, so yeah. It's a great, uh, yeah. great result. For, what what for is it about some runners that they can be so durable, still run good yeah. races into their 40s, Steve? There, there's he's no pretty tough. He's been coached by Troopy, would you believe? So he's learned yeah. well. And he was <laughs> he's in the Navy, so he's got a, a, a um, armed forces mm -hmm. background. So... So it's a great result for him to. He, he, I think he's, he's he's had some hardship, and he um, he's a very tough competitor, really, and he's worked hard. As I say, from navy background, yeah. sometimes had to run on the boat and on land. So it's been a, a great success story for Rowan. Perseverance. We're going to cross out to the finish line where Mossy and Robbo have got uh, uh, Sila Limo, the winner, new record holder of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. Over to you guys. Understanding that you were about to break an Australian record? No, I don't know anything about that. My aim was to come here run to run 210. But when I stand 38 kilometers, I see it because the record is going. And at what point in the race did you decide to go out on your own? It was a very brave move. Yes, it was me alone. So my colleagues, when I tried to help them to push again, no one came. It was me alone until the end. And so the last stages must have been very tough for you on your own? Yes, it was very tough. 
Yes, I expect that to turn on kilometers. Congratulations. Absolutely amazing effort. Sila Limo down here at the Gold Coast Airport Marathoner. He is your champion. Thank you very much. Mossy and Robbo doing a great job out there. Uh, headbands at the ready. <laughs> and uh, you don't need a headband to be a Gold Coast Airport Marathon champion, do you, Benita? No, you don't. You don't. But I'm sure they'd like you to wear one. <laughs> <laughs> They're no. always giving out those headbands. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a good look. Probably more yeah. synonymous with tennis than running. But uh, And we're looking of interest for you mm. is the uh, women's... Well, we think we've got a winner there. Uh, Asami uh, Kato, who is a good close to two minutes clear at 40K. Yeah, I mean, she's very, very strong. She's been leading for quite some time now. She's fallen off. She was on 226 pace for a while, I think, fallen off that a bit, but holding on very well. And uh, she ran a very good time in Nagoya earlier in the year. So mm. she's in form and uh, she's, you know, she's coming through. She was very confident at the press conference. So I was picking her for the win. Yeah. She ran, I think, about 229 yep, there. Yep, so, right. so this yep. could she's be PB territory time. for her. Yeah. Nagoya uh, earlier mm. this year, 229.08. So we will yeah. watch uh, that interest. We'll be looking for some pictures very soon of the uh, women's mm. winner, uh, Kato. Um, Japanese 1-2, uh, looks like it there, um, Shin, Shintaku. And there is the leader in the women's race, uh, Asami Kato. She's over that little mm. that little rise, that uh, that little inlet that I mentioned. So this is this long straight, then she turns into the chicane. So she'll start feeling the crowds now. And this is where I think we saw Limo actually pick up and, and respond mm. a bit to that crowd. And, and knowing she's close to home, that will certainly lift her performance. So hopefully, she can kick on, she might run um, under 229, which whilst it's no race record, it's uh, I think that probably would be the second fastest time. It will be year. close, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Brett Lana was saying when he looked at Kato yesterday, he thought she looked very, very skinny, not just fit, but uh, yeah. uh, there's no issue there from your point of view because she's proving she's so strong, Benita. Oh, yeah, and, and she's very young too, you know, 23, 24. Um, and, and, but I, I think a lot of these Japanese girls, that's their build, you know, and, and everyone's different and everyone runs their best at, at different weights. But you've got to have low body fat levels. I mean, that's the bottom line, really, to the marathon. And, um, yeah, I, I think it comes down to how her training's been going and what she knows. She's, she's probably the same weight as she was when she ran 229 in Nagoya. So, she, you know, these Japanese people, they come to these races prepared exactly to run. Um, exactly what they want to do and, and you know that she's ready and yeah she's very very skinny but I think that's her build. Is body weight much of an issue for, for men or women? I mean usually your weight would be stable as a runner right? you wouldn't expect anybody to sort of put on any more than a kilo or two unless you're injured or ill yeah. or something. I don't think it, it's, it's not it's not too much most people know what they should be but it, it's when people are, are too lean and they get too lean that that can be a problem as being too heavy as well so you've got to find where, where you run your best, you've got to find what level to, uh, to go to. And, and everyone's different. It's very individualised. So you can't really compare yourself. So I couldn't compare myself to Kato. And I, I, I mean, if I was if I was as lean as her or um, as light looking, I probably wouldn't run as well. Yes. Um, but that's just my body shape um, compared to her. But, uh, the, you know, it, it's just very individualised, Steve. Mm, it see, is. Yeah, yeah and, and you're obviously you're running. These, everyone in this race, the elite runners, are running 200 k's a week. Mm. So you don't, take, yeah. if anything, you need. It's, yeah. it's the few, you can't get enough fuel on to replace all that mm. energy you're burning up. Yeah, I always found as well. Sometimes for the marathon, uh, for me, it helped to just be a little bit heavier than on the track yeah. and for cross country. Just mm. so you've got those fat stores, and I know I'm pretty efficient at burning fat. So for me, it just it did help. I mean, I look, yeah, and people told me I looked a bit heavier in some of my best marathons than on the track, but. They make that the nicest yeah, possible yeah, way, I'm yeah. sure. I oh, know, you, oh, you get criticised for everything. You yeah. can't win, <laughs> at can you? What, no, but, um, but yeah, I know what works for me, so that's what, yeah. yeah. So we're looking at uh, Asami uh, Kato, who yeah. are coming in with about a kilometre to go. So uh, we've got some results on the Australian yeah. and Oceania Championships, and sadly it's not a fairy tale ending for Lee Troop. Rowan Walker of the Australian Capital Territory, our winner, 2.21.47. Smile on your face, Benita, because yeah. Al Stevenson, and smile on my face, yeah. I know, Steve, uh, 2.23.48, that's a big PB yeah, for ten, him. Yeah, 10 minutes, so he ran 2.33 in Hobart, and today we're just trying to run around 2.25, because he had a really bad experience there, so what we wanted to do was just run a lot better, a lot faster, but make sure that, um, you know, he was running into the 2.20s, and the next one he's going to, you know, go for a sub 2.20, but I I'm so excited, I'm just, yeah, I'm really, really pumped, he's going to be really thrilled. That's a great yeah. Queensland story for yeah. uh, Al Stevenson, um, he's somebody who's late to marathoning, a, a mm. quite a very good career as a uh, 10 or uh, 10 kilometre runner and 1500 metres even, but we're looking at uh, Asami Kato About a minute of to Japan. go, I reckon, mm. Ian. So yeah. she's going to run just under, two, I reckon this, this will be under PB under 229. 
Oh, that'd be fantastic, yeah. Wow. So here we go down the finishing shoot. Our winner of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon women's race for 2014, a clear winner. Asami, Asami Kato of Japan. Japan won in 2013 in the men's and women's. They're going to come home with gold this year in the women's race. Strong finish, lifting the arms, lifting the knees. Really coming home well for Kato. Benita, you call her home. Yeah, I mean, she's just looking so good. She's, the final straight here is slight downhill. I think she's just got the finish line in sight and she knows, you know, it's her first major city marathon win. Um, she's just so excited. She probably knows that she was going to run a PB as well. So I reckon 228.52, so just sub yeah. 229. She'll be delighted with that Fantastic. and really ran strongly to the finish. That's a, that's an outstanding result. Either way, mm. that is a PB for her. Yeah. We're not sure uh, if it's uh, by uh, sort of 8 to 10 seconds or something like that. So that is fantastic. We're now looking at the second Japanese um, uh, Shintaku. Rico so, Shintaku. Is yes. That'll and be a Japanese Kanoa. Yeah, and she's battled on. I mean, she was coming third, fourth, um, and she's battled on to come up, up into second. So she's had a few bad patches and running through them really well. And I think these kind of athletes are ones that you've got to watch for the, for the big championships because they can they can run through the hard spots and come out and win the medals. We're seeing that yeah. with the Japanese, yeah. aren't we? That yeah. they're, they're should, certainly yeah. they're tough and mm. you know they're they're running right, full of running at the end of the race. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 250 metres to go. That's a good feeling, Benita. Yeah. There is no better feeling than <laughs> no. when you see that finish line yeah. in a race. And I think she's really kicked on this last 5K, and you know? she's she's looking good. She's looking good and. Just really thrilled to come second in such a big race. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just pumped to see these Japanese girls coming one, two here. It continues a very proud record for Japanese women at the Gold Coast Airport Marathon and prouder than the men. When you compare the two records, Japanese women have loved this rate. They've come here in numbers mm. and they've certainly performed over the years. Oh yeah, and, and they come ready to perform. And I, I think, you know, they, they've seen what, what the weather's like here and they do their marathons early in the year in Japan and then come here. and. Um, you know, they've got a few months to recover and, and train again. So, yeah, no, she's, she's going to be pumped, just going to be over 2.30 there and uh, another very strong run. I mean, any, any woman that runs under 2.32 is, is very good, very good. I think she might be just approaching, I'm using your notes, Benita, I think her PB 2.31.15, so she's yeah. just under that as well, so another personal yeah. best. Yeah, PB's a PB, and I think when, when you're younger and you run them all the time, you don't appreciate it until you get older. <laughs> you appreciate it, <laughs> <Yeah>. Benita. <laughs> yeah. And Tanaka, no. not a spring chicken, in, in, even in marathon terms, uh, 44. Uh, that is a fantastic effort for her to um, wow. uh, finish on like that. A PB, yeah, wow, PB at 44. You'd take that, wouldn't you? Yeah, you, you, don't, you <laughs> don't do that too often. Yeah, fantastic. Now, wow. remember that name, Tanaka, because I can tell you, um, uh, we've heard it here, we'll see it again, her daughter, Nozomi, who's about 13 or 14, she's won the Junior Dash here at the Gold Coast twice okay. in 2011 and 2012. Okay. There is pedigree in the family, <laughs> and I'm told her daughter didn't come out this time because she's running the national championships in Japan. So wow. there could be a, a bit of a bat and handing between uh, mother and daughter, the name <laughs> Tanaka. Could see that quite a bit more at the Gold Coast Airport Marathon um, with... Uh, that uh, fantastic effort by uh, Chihiro Tanaka. And we're now seeing the third place finisher, 231.40. Who have we got there? Uh, it's Ethiopian, one of, yeah, I think. She, one of the Ethiopians. Yeah. Is that Chep Chumba? No. No, no it no, might no, no. be um, um, Malise or... Um, not sure, yeah. Terrific finish, uh, also under 2.32. Oh, so Sullivan. some world-class times there. Yeah, De Sullivan, I think, the Ethiopian. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I know she was she was up in the in that main pack, but just kind of died a bit at the end. She's not far one. outside her personal best. Oh, I think she mm. might be uh, might even been right on it. So three almost personal bests for the top three yeah, place yeah. getters in the women's race shows mm. it's no accident. They're running fast. Yeah, we're, yeah. We yeah. delivered today the Gold Coast Airport Marathon yeah. PBs all round. Yeah, I'm feeling relieved, yeah. guys. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> it is oh, terrific yeah, yeah. to see history in the making here. I'm just waiting for mm. Troopy now. I might, um, I, I yeah. might uh, pop Where out and just go. see yeah. him there. So um, yeah, if I do disappear, it's not because I'm um, any other reason but the emotion of seeing Troopy finish his last marathon. Well, mm. Steve, you go. We're, we're yeah. more than happy yeah. to uh, let what you... What a great day. Famous yeah. day. I've enjoyed uh, bringing yeah. it to, to the viewers and, and watchers at home. And it's special, certainly great emotion and atmosphere in here. And I'm delighted to have been a part of it. So thanks, Ben, and yeah. very much. Thanks, Ian, for, for carrying me through and sharing that moment for us. Oh, Steve, thank you for your contribution. Uh, there's uh, not many better uh, names and expert commentators in uh, Australian marathon running than uh, Benita Willis, Steve Monteghetti and, and Rob DiCostello, who we've had. So... We
We uh, are going to take a little bit of a break and we'll come back with the final chapter as runners come across the finish line. Uh, joy uh, and some sorrow, but plenty of uh, memories out there at the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. harder, race faster, recover quicker with Endura Sports Nutrition. Flying from the Gold Coast Airport is easy with hundreds of direct flights every week to the most popular destinations including Sydney over 25 times a day, Melbourne over 15 times a day and Cairns 7 days a week. Parking is affordable from only $16 a day and convenient too with online booking. Flights are frequent with a range of leading airlines. See where you can fly to at goldcoastairport.com.au. Ever thought a degree could help you achieve more? Our Gold Coast campus is perfectly positioned to excite and empower you with degrees to launch your career as a business professional and take it to the next level or be your passport to international work opportunities or make your mark in the fast-growing health sector or work in the legal system. And be sure to explore our distance education options. Apply now to study in 2015. It's all about you at Sun and Cross University, Gold Coast. The next great drive begins. All new Mazda 3 has amazing ways to connect. And Skyactiv technology gives you sports performance yet outstanding fuel economy. All new Mazda 3. It's everything you imagine a great drive can be. One bedroom. One bathroom. But it's a start. Two floods, 74 and 2011. Well, three year old boys. We're gonna need a bigger yard. Four successful businesses and counting. Five cars insured. Thanks, Mum. Six months on the road. Seven years supporting young care. Eight series wins in a row. It's about time they got one. <laughs> At Suncorp, we're proud to help Queenslanders get ahead every day because this is our place. Want to travel further for less? Gold Coast Airport is well connected with direct flights to popular destinations throughout Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Singapore and to Japan. We have over 350 direct flights a week with a range of leading airlines. And flying from the Gold Coast means you spend less time travelling and more time enjoying your next holiday. See where you could fly to at goldcoastairport.com.au.
Welcome back to the studio of the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. Here we are, history in the making. Benita Willis, we're excited. A, a, a lot of the elite runners are in, but I know you're taking special interest for some of your athletes out there. Yeah. You've had a good day with Al Stevenson finishing second, but a few more of your guys and girls that you're watching out there. Yeah, we've got a few more coming in. A uh, few members of the Queensland team for the Australian Marathon Championships, as well as um, coach the Ipswich Mayor's son. Um, so it's another That's another James Pasali. Yeah, yes. James Pasali. He's he's uh, probably going to be a high 240s. So we're just waiting now and, and seeing how they go. But a 10 minute PB for Alistair is really good, and second in a national championship. I mean, that's just fantastic. Yeah. That takes it to a whole new league for him. So 233, mm. you know, that's a pretty good time. That's very mm. respectable. But once he's pushing under 223, that yeah. gets him some overseas races. He's yeah. not a spring chicken, but he's still got no. life left. Yeah, he's not a spring chicken, but he's had such good results over 1500, 5k, and moving up to the marathon's a big step. And mm. he did his first marathon in Hobart earlier in the year. And um, when I moved back to Australia, he asked me to help uh, coach him and some of his mates, and the guys are all running today. And he's had a big improvement. And we just wanted to run around 225, so he's mm. beaten that quite considerably. Um, I made the race plan so he didn't break my PB. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but I think the next one he's going to go for well under 220, which is going to be awesome. And you just get confidence as you keep improving. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And confidence, I guess, to push yourself a little bit more through those long patches of training rather than mm. worry about, am I going too hard because I'm going to get injured or sick or something like that. It's always such a fine line. And yeah. your experience will help with your athletes there. Yeah, and, and certainly. And you get to a stage in your career and, and Alice is like this he, he knows about the right things to do mm. but it, it's holding people back and saying look you don't need to do that hard run or just do this and just giving them direction and they can mm. just focus on their training and not think about anything else and just recover and, and these guys all work very hard I mean I know Al starts work at like four in the morning a lot of the time and uh, they're, they're, they're like Yuki you know uh, and they're just fantastic it's just great to see them all improving. Another young bloke who I ran with years ago Tom Dover uh, he yeah. was a good uh, middle distance runner and yeah. uh, another one moving up to the marathon there, there must be yeah. something in the water in Queensland a lot of guys step <laughs> Up. Yeah, and Tom and Al do a lot of their runs together. I've been looking after him as well, and he's hoping to run just under 2.40. So, yeah, we'll wait, wait and see how he goes. But he's been doing really well, So um, and they're, they're all excited for each other. And I think that's the best thing about training groups is being excited for someone else um, as well as yourself. And that's what pushes people and drives them to mm. do even better. Yeah. So for any couch potato sitting at home there, Benita, thinking, I couldn't do any of this marathon stuff, I think you've hit upon something which is gold there, that the camaraderie, the support, of running in a group. It doesn't necessarily have to be an elite group. There's there's many mm -hmm. people out there like Pat Carroll and yourself yeah. who are coaching people at different mm -hmm. levels. But but seek out a support mm -hmm. group. There's there's security and support and improvement in numbers, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, for sure, yeah. And I think, um, y you know, for me in my career, I've always liked people around and I, I don't like doing a lot of stuff by myself. And But I've always liked someone to reassure me that I'm doing the right thing or to take a day off. And I think when you get to a certain level and you've got no one to kind of make that decision, mm -hmm. And even though I'm a woman in charge of all these men, you know, it still, it still helps. So, yeah, and I'm just so proud of them. And they've all just done really well. And People. we're going to still still see some of them finish now. Yeah, yeah. arms raised across the line. There yeah. we go. Uh, yeah. Lola Loka, I think, is tweeting about course mm. record. Everyone's tweeting the course record. And a man who would tweet if he had the time because he's too busy <laughs> smiling. Yeah. Cameron Hart, welcome to the studio. Mate, mm. I want to shake your hand on air because it's happened. You yeah. You've yeah. done it. The yeah. record is gone. It's, it's a decade of hard work that's finally come to fruition. So um, as a proud Queensland, the two others. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how's that table? Three Queenslands. Um, yeah. yeah, look, stoked is used a lot, but I'm beyond stoked. It's, um, mm. it, it's relieving, it's exciting. So many emotions going on at the moment. And, and uh, we've, got a, we've got a check sitting around with some cobwebs, which we're brushing off to, <laughs> to pay out because we've been trying for a while, as you know, Ian. Yeah. I know. Well, e even your uh, CFO, uh, Tony Mullen, he's the bean counter, but he's been happy to hand over money. For you guys, I guess that's symbolic of the race going to a new level. So I know last year you were saying you were going to go for silver label status. Like Andrew Lloyd in 94, you said, bugger silver, we're going yep. for gold. Yes. Mm. So that's gone to a new level. The race record has gone to a new level. Momentous times. It, look, it has. Mm. And I guess the, the synergies of having our first gold label and, and the course record going and the all-comers record, it's, you know, all the planets have aligned well. But it's, you know, it's a lot of hard work. A lot of people have, have put into it. Uh, and, and it's a very complex event to, to deliver and yeah look we're over the moon and and I think it, it is indicative I think it's the event hasn't lived up to its to its due status in the past we've tried we've tried and tried um, everyone's saying this is a great event and, and it should be fast um, you know we had perfect weather we had, we had good conditions and uh, yeah it's really exciting to have that you know, you know the fastest ever marathon 
ever in Australia, just down just outside our window here. It's 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 awesome, and to have um, you know have so many people of Benita's caliber and Deke and Miners and Treepy and, and all those people around us to share in that, it's been really 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 exciting. So Stephen Limo, we didn't have a lot of form on him. I gather his entry was later rather than earlier, but uh, he's been gold, hasn't he? Yeah, well, in, more, in more ways than one. Yeah, and um, look, and, and, and I think the, the other real surprise there was second place scared American Jeffrey yeah. Eggleston who ran a PB. Yeah. And you know, when I saw the splits coming through and Jeff was sitting in there in second place, I think, he's given this a really good crack. Yeah. Yep. Um, and yeah, I caught, caught him just over the, over the finish line and he was, he was beaming for me. He was happy as I am, I think. And, and look, it's, just, yeah. it's, it's the fact that we can help deliver people those sort of personal goals and, and, uh, and, uh, and I guess an organisational goal. Of getting that uh, that yeah what about two nine fourteen unofficially but uh, it's yeah very exciting. So a bit of a surprise packet. Uh, lovely to see Yuki come through for a podium yeah. finish yeah. and finishing strongly. But uh, the Japanese did not feature as we thought. That's the unpredictability of the marathon, isn't it? It, it is, and you've nailed it there. It is such an unpredictable event. I mean, so many things can can happen out there. And I think it was up to you know twenty five thirty k's. Uh, I, I was looking at the splits, and we had a, had about eight guys on. On high sort of 208 times, yes, um, and then for whatever yeah. whatever reason, whatever happened there, they just sort of dropped off a bit. Um, it's not that hot outside. It's not mm. that windy. It, I think it's just whatever reason. It, yeah, yeah. It's sort of a few of them just uh, just dropped off the pace. Maybe they got uh, got too excited with that 20 grand check and they went too early. <laughs> um, they didn't take the advice of all the legends at our lunch yeah. yesterday to go easy and come <laughs> home strong. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, we, we got a record, and yeah, we, we're very excited. Mm. It's a, it's a it's the accumulation of a lot of work by a lot, by a lot of people, um, you know, both the full-time staff and all the, the stakeholders and sponsors and everyone that deliver that. So yeah, I know you've worked so hard over the years, all your team has. I've been sitting here calling it, but you know what? This lady here is the lucky charm. She drops Absolutely. into yeah. the first race. <laughs> She's the lucky charm. The race record gets broken. Benita, you're welcome back any time here yeah, at Gold well, Coast. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, well, I, I show up to Australia and uh, Queens don't lose the origin, but I think we'll take, <laughs> yeah, I think we'll take the Gold Coast uh, over that any day. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm the lucky charm and I've had um, some big PBs by some of the guys I've coached today and, um, and just been fantastic to see the spread of countries as well in the top three uh, in, in the men. I mean, fantastic. Talked to Jeffrey Eggleston yesterday and ran a PB in Boston not that yes. long ago just flew in from America I mean you don't see many Americans come out here uh, and race um, and we, I'd love Ryan Hall to come out here or Sarah Hall or you know anyone from America and it's just great that someone comes out here and runs that and then the news just spreads I've already texted some of my mates in Boulder that's where he's living <laughs> yeah they're excited yeah and Boulder is a hub of distance running in the US uh, mm. Boulder Colorado uh, Troopy yeah. of course based there yeah um, the word will spread and we will yeah. see more Americans uh, Cam mm. you'd be delighted to see that um, and I guess a few more Chinese as well that Chinese market is growing yeah it is and the USA market has been something we've been striving for for a while but we like all the other markets we develop we need someone to sell our story for us I mean mm. people will hear race directors cry about how good an event it is but athletes I think yeah. the real selling point and uh, yeah. um, I've been really pleased to meet Jeffrey he's a nice young bloke um, the fact that he's, he's run a PB here he'll go home and say nice things about our event and we also had Sean Quigley doing the pacing um, one of Troopy's uh, athletes from Boulder so mm. Hopefully both of those guys will go back and, and tell some wonderful stories about, you know, not only the event, the climate, the organisation and, uh, and it'll bring a lot more because it's a huge market. Um, mm -hmm. We've just got to get a few more Americans on planes to come down. It's not that yeah. hard. Benita's no, been going I mean, the other way yeah. for years and years. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> don't. Living yeah, through. and that's we think nothing of the flight um, yeah. as well. So I think once they've done it all, they, they've seen someone that's done it that's run well yeah. and, and that's the, the big fit thing for them. They want to come here and run a good time or... You know, and, and they know they're going to have a good experience because everyone wants to come to Australia, but it's about the race, yeah, exactly. for sure. It's a competitive yeah. marathon market too, but now you guys in the upper echelon. Now, speaking of competition, Tarly Bird of Victoria is our uh, Oceania f Oceania female championship. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really good time, 2.43.58, Benita. Yeah, I mean, she, and she's on debut. Uh, she lives in Utuka, country of Victoria. Uh, I know Trevor Vincent has a lot to do with her coaching, and um, he, he, he's been a mentor, a former steeplechaser as well. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, he's been a mentor. I mean, I'm thrilled to see that time, and I know that she's tried a marathon before and it hasn't worked out. She dropped out at 15K, and uh, just a great story. She's not even 30, she's about 28, I think. Uh, yeah. Young, young. So yeah, fantastic to see that. We've got yeah. some good female runners coming through. Alexander yeah. Williams, uh, New Zealand, a second, 245.21. And another Queenslander on the podium yeah. finish, uh, Artie Van Cattison, uh, 
Queensland 247.30. So third in the uh, IAAF Oceania Marathon Championships for women. Uh, Cam, how did we go on, on numbers, the, the overall numbers out there? We were close to a record, but great strong uh, support again. Yeah, look, we're, um, the final figure, I'm not quite sure, over 27,000, 27,200, something like that. But what was really special for us this year was the huge growth in the international market. Uh, mainly th through Asia, but um, it, it's we had I think about three thousand two hundred registered athletes from overseas. Wow! Uh, and each of those were bringing in a couple of friends and family with them, or, or media contingents. There's a lot of media here from overseas mm -hmm. covering this event. So, th the impact uh, of the event goes far beyond the, the sporting arena. It's it's really it's an economic driver. It's a tourism driver, and the climate and the the weather that's been shown from the webcast this morning, mm. particularly some of those early early aerials oh, yeah. going to service paradise. It didn't look magnificent. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, that, I live here, so that's we get every day of the year. <laughs> yeah, so right. you come on down and visit with and me. And usually yeah. flying yeah. a chopper around so you can enjoy those aerials, well, you aren't know, you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> may, may, maybe my pay rise comes through after this performance <laughs> again, I might get a chopper. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's good to see so much support. Mm. And, and the gold label has helped that. A lot of the people I've spoken to from overseas have said, well, we knew about the gold label and we wanted to come and be a part of it. So. Uh, it's, that label has helped us a lot. So yeah. how do you leverage off this going forward? We'll be wrapping up the coverage in a couple of minutes. Uh, you've, you've cracked that uh, goal there. There will be new goals to set, I'm sure. I know you guys never sit on your laurels. How do you leverage this? The time is very important for us. I mean, we've had the, I guess, the, the, the recreational market um, about 65% each year report that people come here and run a PB. So we've known it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's fast and, and we need an elite athlete to, to run a fast time. Um, you know, last year we had uh, Akuba you know, smashed a course record for the women's and the Japanese lady, you know, the, the course record today and, and all comers record. It, it is a fast course mm. Mm. and, and that, that's encouraging for people to know they can come to the event and now has a gold label so it's almost like a quality assurance program. Yeah. Yeah. They can come yeah. here and run a PB and enjoy the Gold Coast lifestyle. I mean, three out of three in, in all areas and that's what we'll leverage mm. and leverage the storytelling that people do on our behalf and that's a big thing for us. So there's still uh, probably a, you know another thousand runners out there, Benita. Um, yeah. uh, you'd be feeling for them. It is it is getting a bit warmer. Uh, those mm. people who are on their legs for three hours, uh, the clock is coming up to uh, the three hour mark. So it's going to be tough for for men and women still out there. Yeah, I mean it's tough, and we were talking about this a bit before with uh, Steve and. It, it's just that time on your feet, and that's one thing that, I mean, I've never ru done a run over three hours, you know, but we've got some people that are going to be four hours, five hours, um, and, and it's those people that really need to make sure they're drinking plenty. I mean, they're only just going to be going through halfway, and uh, but they're the people that make this event so, so good. You know, they're all their family are out here cheering them on. They're cheering on the elites. They're telling people about it as well, and, you know, it's just as important to have the elites, but then also for, for everyone else in the field, and that's what I love to see, just people, I don't know, just doing their best, you know, and running it might be a PB of 358, yes. first time under four hours, you know, yes. and that's what I love to see. Cam, yeah. from your point of view, I guess, uh, you know, the elite end is fantastic, but I know it is the mass market, which in all your everyday discussions, mm. it's special because you're creating an event where people write a, a chapter in their own personal history. It becomes a conversation for groups, water fountains, people at family gatherings. I ran Gold Coast. Yep, and, and that's that's our catch cry, run Gold Coast. We want people to say, you yeah. know, that, that's what that's what mm. I've done, and and it is really starting to deliver on that. And there's, there's many people who come back time and time again because of this, the quality of it, and, and they love it. Um, yeah, they, they bring their friends and families and have a vacation. And I think, yeah, particularly after this weekend, that the pride of people who've done this event, particularly today, yes. is mm. going to be right up there. I mean, today was a historical event in Australian distance running. Yeah. And anyone, yeah. any one of those, you know, five thousand plus finishers that will come through today in, in the full marathon. Um, should be really, really proud and happy that they've shared a part of history. I know I am as race director to help deliver it. Um, yeah. And I say help because uh, you know, I'm, I'm for fortunate to be at the pointy end. There's so many great people, my staff behind me, who've done a lot of work for a lot of hours to bring it to fruition and my board and sponsors and everyone else. But uh, it's yeah, just so exciting to deliver that and let people you know, sh reap their rewards. I and mean, we're just deliverers of opportunities, really. Mm -hmm. And it's up to people to take those opportunities and, and a, lot many, a lot have done it today. And I know you like to take this as a special opportunity to thank those some of those key sponsors who have uh, shown your loyalty. Gold Coast uh, Airport, this is, I think, their seventh? Twelfth year. Twelfth year, yeah. and they've signed up for mm. another three. Look, it's 12 years continuous as a naming rights partnership is one of the longest in, in Queensland sporting history, possibly the longest. Yep. Um, they've been a fantastic partner, particularly with, with what they deliver outside of the cash connectivity mm. to other markets. I mean, ASICS as a global um, sports property have been outstanding of helping us internationally. Um, Suncorp Bank, uh, Southern Cross University, Endura Sports Drink, 
um, New Pure Water, all the way down the list. You know, everyone who I've forgotten to name, and excuse me. Uh, and your army of volunteers, oh, aren't they? 1,100 volunteers. Yeah. And the Gold Coast is renowned for it. And, and our yeah. volunteers come back year in, year out because they, the passion for what they do and the love help visitors to the city. And it bodes extremely well for 2018, where we're going to be hosting the Commonwealth Games mm. right here in this same facility. This is going to be the hub of activity. So the city is looking very bright, particularly at the 2018 and beyond. And for us, beyond 2018, the Gold Coast mm. Airport Marathon, that, that event will help us leverage even further. So your supporters have been uh, fantastic supporters out on the course, those volunteers. Um, the community, I've got to thank the community yeah. too. We close the streets down, we cause chaos for two days. The community come out and stand and cheer runners on. It's, uh, they help make the event too. It's been a fantastic day here at the Gold Coast Airport Marathon. Great to share it with you both. Cam, congratulations. Benita, thank you and congratulations. Congratulations yeah. to your runners out there. History in the making, so there we go. We don't have to sound like broken records anymore no. about will the course record go. It's History made. Yeah. History well, made. I need to correct you there. So well and yeah. truly. Yeah. Well and truly. That's Thank awesome. you very much, Cam. Uh, that is the webcast for uh, 2014. Uh, we have history in the making. Uh, don't uh, go away from your uh, web viewing because we certainly have more to come. Uh, Mossy and Robbo will be doing a special post-marathon wrap, so they'll be on a little bit later. But that's all from us in the studio. History in the making, the Gold Coast Airport Marathon for 2014. Thank you, and we'll see you next year.